All right, so we're going to talk about network resources and how we define our networks based on these resources. Um, so, so far we talked about lots of different ways to define our networks. We talked about it based on geography, whether it was a pan, a LAN, a CAN, a MAN, or a WAN. We talked about it based on its topology, whether it was a logical or physical, whether it was a bus, a ring, a star, a mesh, or a hub and spoke. And now we're going to talk about it based on the way that we share our resources on the network, which is one of the main reasons why we have networks in the first place. So the first one we have is a client server model. Okay? And this is one of the most common ways that we share things in a network, uh, especially in business environments. We'll have a dedicated server providing access to files, scanners, printers, and other resources. Uh, the nice thing about a client server model is that administration and backup is very easy because you have a central point of everything. So if I needed to make a change to a file server, I just go to that one file server and I can change everything, right? Um, it's one of the reasons why the Windows server systems have been very, very popular, is it makes organization simple because all of it is centralized in one or two machines uh, on these few key uh, servers, which allows us to change everything easily. Uh, and as you can see here in this, this diagram, this is a very small network. We have three clients that are then going to connect to the shared printer or to the shared server. And that would be a client server model. The good thing about client server is we have centralized administration, we have easy management, and better scalability. If I need to add 200 more machines, it's not a big problem because the server can handle it. Or I would just add one more server to serve up all those files. The drawback of it is there's higher cost. If you've ever tried to buy an operating system for a server, they are very pricey. Um, so if you're going to buy a Windows server, for instance, the cost is pretty prohibitive for most small users. Um, it does require dedicated resources. So I'm going to have a machine that its whole function in life is to do serving. It's not going to do any other work but being a server. Uh, and it does require a network operating system, something like a Unix or a Linux or a Windows server environment, because Windows, uh, for the personal use, has a maximum number of connections it'll allow you to connect to. So even if you're using your personal machine as a server, you're going to be limited very quickly on how many people can connect to you. But if you're using like Windows Server 2012, you can have hundreds and thousands of people connecting to that particular server. The next type we have is what's called peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, and this is where you are connecting to other folks, right? So for instance, let's say Michelle has some files on her hard drive she wants to share with us. She can share it locally through her Windows 8 PC. There's not a problem with that. Uh, the big problem is because it's not a dedicated network operating system to act as a server, she has a file limit, generally around 10 users that can connect to her. Uh, and the other issue we have is, as soon as Michelle goes home for the day and shuts down her computer, can we access those files anymore? No, right? So using a peer-to-peer, -peer, you do have issues like that. Um, the other big problem we have is administration and backup is more difficult. So let's say Michelle's sharing some folders, and Jennifer's sharing some folders, and John's sharing some folders. If I want to back those up, I need to go to three different places now. Whereas if it was all in one file server, it would make it a lot easier for me, right? So it adds administrative burden and overhead for your technicians. So your benefits is you do have a lower cost because you already have the hardware. You already have your workstation, right? You don't need dedicated software or resources because you already have Windows that will do that or Macintosh that will do that. Uh, the drawbacks is, is decentralized management. So I've got to go to 17 different machines to do all the backups. It's also very inefficient for large networks, okay? And it has very poor scalability. Um, I usually see this used a lot in small businesses. Um, think of like the small real estate company that has five agents in it. Um, I've used to do a lot of work for one of those and they had the secretary's machine had the printer and they shared it through her machine and so whenever the realtors would print it would go through the secretary's computer and then print to the printer well if the secretary's computer crashed everyone in the office was down right whereas if it was on a print server it wouldn't have been an issue um, it also started bogging down her workload because if 10 people were printing to her machine it's using up processing and resources on that machine that's not dedicated for it so peer-to-peer -peer does have its uses but in general, it's uh, for a business environment, it's not the way to go. You definitely want to use a client server model instead. And that is how you define your networks based on resourcing. Basically, there's two different types, right? Client server or peer-to-peer.